Hello. This is video 32. And I know I left you hanging last time. I um, went through all that trouble, showed you all the stuff about two, three, four trees, and then said, you know, after all of that, we still have a problem with it. Even though, hey, even though it did solve the problem of that stringy, long, drawn out binary search tree that can happen, it still had um, this problem. Problem with two, three, four trees. There can be, or there will be, if we've got a lot of data values, there can be what I'm going to call many, M-I-N-I, -I, sequential searches. I'll abbreviate sequential since I'm not sure I'll spell it correctly. There can be many sequential searches, and that's M-I-N-I, -I, not M-A-N-Y. Uh, within a node. Well, not that's not going to be plural, is it? Within nodes. There can be many sequential searches within nodes. Why? Because inside a node, we've got a little array, a little array of size three. Oh, that shouldn't take very long, except if we have a huge tree that's got lots and lots of data for a database in it. Uh, those can add up, those little many sequential searches of having to look through the third one to find out, well, we need to go to the far right on this. So there can be many sequential searches within nodes, comma, because of the array of data values. Arrays, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping forgetting to put plural, arrays, excuse me, of data values. Each node has its own little miniature array. Actually, a two, three, four tree. I'm going to get a little bit off topic here, and I might come back and revisit this later if this module doesn't end too soon. But a two, three, four tree is a special case of what's called a B tree. A B tree just means, um, well, I don't know what it means, but in a B tree, you do have arrays of data elements rather than single data elements. And you might think, why would we ever want more than three? Well, actually, we might want several more than three. It's actually uh, the case that B-trees are used in file systems a lot. The Microsoft file system, for example, is B-tree based, and you can do some Wikipedia searching or research or whatever, and you'll see that a 2 3 4 tree that we've been looking at, that's really just a special case of a B-tree. And now I'm back. Okay, there can be many sequential searches within nodes because of the arrays or data values. It's always nice when problems have solutions, don't they? We would have come up with this. We're smart enough to figure this out. We solve the problem of the ordered list order in searches by replacing that with uh, ideally an order log base two of n binary search tree. So why not well, replace the little miniature arrays with tiny little miniature trees, like Christmas decorations almost. Solution, put the data values within a node the data values within each node in their own mini BSTs. See, we could have figured that out. We solved the problem of long searches and arrays by replacing that with a big mini, uh, a big miniature, no, a big binary search tree. We can replace each little array of size three with a little mini BST that's got at most three nodes in it. <laughs> well, I'll show you what I mean. For example, this is gonna be backwards, by the way. I'm gonna start with the example because this can get pretty complicated. And maybe, maybe if I explain the example clearly, we'll be able to reverse engineer the algorithms that actually are required to construct one of these trees. So away we go. Those are the keys uh, that have been up there since day one when we were talking about um, problems with trees. Um, a is going to be the first one inserted. So there, that represents an internal node with A in it and it's the root of the whole tree. Now then, <clears throat> I am going to, in, in, instead of drawing the little piano keyboard thing that looks, I mean, that looks like that for a node for a two, three, four tree, I'm just going to make this a big red box. And that might not even be big enough. 
By the way, I have the eraser handy. This is going to require a lot of redrawing, even more than the 2343. Three. There, brace yourselves. So here we are. This uh, red box represents what was in a 2343 one node. So I've got room for two more data values within the node, but I'm not going to put them in an array. I'm going to put them in a little tree. That's why I drew the red box so, so bigly. B, here comes B. B is greater than A, so it's going to go off to the right. And since it's in the same red box, I'm going to use a red arrow to draw my arrow to the right child B over here. Uh, a and B are done. Here comes Z. Z is greater than A, greater than B, of course it is. Nothing's greater than Z. There's Z, and it's got a red arrow as well. Now, <clears throat> this is already degenerated into an order in search, a little miniature order in search. It provides no advantage whatsoever over an array of link three as we had in the two, three, four tree. So at this point, uh, we're gonna stop and we're gonna rebalance this. I'm gonna abbreviate with bal, because I'm gonna be writing balance a lot. We don't let it stand like that. We rebalance this so that now B will be the root of the entire tree. And it will have left child A and right child Z. So in effect, what we're doing is just rotating the binary search tree. We're, we have to keep these things in the same order. They still have to be in the right order. But look what we have here. Now we've got this nice balanced red box with a little miniature binary search tree of its own inside it. One big happy family there in the red box at the top of the tree. And I should be marking these off or I'm not going to be able to keep up. A and B and Z. Here comes Y. Well, you know what? You remember what we did when we reached a 234 node from above and bonked it on the head and found out that it was full? It had to split wide open. That's what's going to happen here. Before we even put Y in, we look ahead, follow this black arrow, and we find out, you know what? This red box is full. This red box is full, so it's going to have to split. S-P-L-I-T. I'm going to have to draw smaller pictures, or this is just not going to get anywhere fast. Split this into three red boxes. Mental note, that each red box represents what used to be a node back in the 234 tree. And if you recall, when we did that, when we did the split, then B is going to be up here alone in its red box. A will have a red box of its own, and Z will have a red box of its own. B is the root of the whole tree, and I'm only going to use red arrows to draw um, the child pointers while we're inside our comfortable little home known as a red box. So B is now going to be connected to A by a black arrow, and B is connected to Z by a black arrow. So black arrows are drawn to connect red boxes to each other, in effect, and the red arrows are drawn to uh, show you the family inside the miniature binary search tree of a red box. And where we're, oh, we were gonna insert Y, I haven't even looked at Y yet. Okay, here we go. I did look at the tree on the way down. Uh, those, are, those are secret words. On the way down, as I was trying to insert Y, I realized that I reached the full red box and it has to split. Before I go any further, now I can go further. Now I compare Y to B and find out it's larger. And it's larger than Z. No, it isn't. It's less than Z, so it's going to come back to the left. Here it is. Now, that will be inside the red box with parent Z. So I use a red arrow. And if you're doing the math inside your head, doing the algorithmic calculations, remember one of the weirdo things about a 2, 3, 4 tree is we always inserted a new data value in an existing node in the tree. Any new node that came along was actually a new root of the entire tree. Look what happened here. The new level, we've got two levels now instead of one. The new level means that we grew from above. B rose up and became the root of the whole tree in a red box all by itself. Not only that, Y was inserted into an existing red box. It was already here. That's why the split. So there'll, there'll be room for Y when we get to the bottom of the tree and we won't have to do any last minute splitting. It will all be done in advance in preparation for Y to move in. Y moved in. How about C? C is greater than B. Come this direct, well, excuse me. We first look, is this red box full? And by full, I mean it's got three nodes in it. Three of the old fashioned circular nodes. 
I, I guess we could think of the red boxes as a node in a, in a way, but I'm going to probably refer to the circles as nodes and the red boxes as red boxes. And um, if that benefits you, great. That's actually for my benefit, so I can try to keep things straight. Um, we look at that. That red box is not full. There's only one node in it. Who am I inserting now? C. C is greater than B, so I look at this red box. Are you full yet? No. But um, C is less than Z, and C is less than Y, so of course I didn't draw the box in the right place. C comes back to the left of Y. Now then, think fast. Why do we have many BSTs in the first place? So that we get the nice little balanced order in searches when we go to the left and then go to the right and all that stuff like the good clock game player. Um, that, we can't leave that. So that's going to require another balance. I'm doing the wraparound to the beginning of the board over here. All this stuff is going to have to go soon. But I'm going to have to redraw the whole tree. B is still alone at the top. I'm going to make this smaller here. A is down here. What we got? Z over here. No, no, no. When I balance that, balance just the mini BST. We're not going to have to balance the whole tree in one shebang. We'll always just be balancing the mini BST inside a red box. When we balance the mini BST inside that red box, Y will be the new head of household, and the left child will be C, and the right child will be Z. And I'm trying real hard not to smear my red marker, and I know I'm not going to be able to do it. That's going to go from nice bright red to smeary black and red any minute now but here's our situation and b has a red box at the top all to itself a has its own little red box over here to the left and y is now the root of the mini bst that used to be that this was a balance or a rotate operation now we did this as part of inserting C. When we inserted C, that caused that mini BST to become unbalanced. And we're not going to allow that aggression to stand. We're going to balance that. Here we go. On the way back up the tree. Secret words for as we're coming out of recursion. We recursively insert node C in its red box down here. As we're returning from the recursive calls that put C down there, we look behind us and see if we've left some unbalanced somewhere. We did. We left that tree unbalanced as we're coming out. And we stop and turn around and balance that on the way out of the recursive call that landed C down there at the bottom. And we leave the balanced tree behind. Now, if there weren't any other data items inserted, then this would be perfectly fine. That is a valid tree. I'll break the seal on the term. This is actually called. No accident here. This is called a red-black tree. A red-black tree is where you take a two, three, four tree, and instead of using the arrays, you put all the nodes in their own little mini BSTs inside what used to be two, three, four tree nodes. So here's my red-black tree so far. Done and done for C. Here comes X. I, as I try to insert X, I realize um, this box is not full, so it's fine. So I take a peek over here to the right, and when I come over here to the right, I realize, you know what? That red box is full. I've got to prepare for where X is eventually going to be inserted, and to do that, I have to split this red box. So before I even, before I even put X in here, I'm going to have to do another split. And I told you, there's a lot of redrawing here. B is still alone. Well, uh, 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 A is alone. I almost said the wrong thing, and I caught myself, so I don't have to start the video all over. Yay! B is still the parent of left child A. B is still the root. Here's something different, though. When this box splits, let's recall, let's review. When a box splits in a 2-3-4 tree, you know what? I need to quit referring to a 2-3-4 tree. I need to just focus on red-black trees. But I've already said it. So when we split a box in a two, three, four tree, it's the middle child that moves up with the parent. Here, it's going to be the root of the BST that moves in with the parent. So Y is going to move in, horn in, in the red box at the top. And that's what I almost misspoke a minute ago. B is not alone at the top. B now has child Y who moved in. So we've got a red arrow going from B to Y. 
and C and Z get red boxes of their own. So C will be down here with its own. Oh, 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 what on earth? It actually took me a long time before I started using the wrong color. I'm pretty proud of myself. There, there's a red box for C. Here's a red box for Z. Here is C. Here is Z. And what arrows? They need black arrows because they are not in the same red box with their parent. That's the rule. You only get a red arrow incoming to you if you are in the same red box as your parent. Now, this is just the result of the split operation. I still have an inserted X, but now I can, uh, X is greater than B, X, Y. X is less than Y, X is greater than C. So X will go down here and become the right child with the red incoming arrow. Don't touch, don't touch, it'll smear. A right child of C with an incoming arrow that's red. Okay, then what? Here comes W. I look at the top red box. Is it full? No. So uh, it is greater than B, W, X, Y. It's less than Y. So we come back to the left and W is greater than C, W, X is less than X. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Just expand this red box. There, we've expanded. Why? Well, W is greater than C, but it's less than X. Is that right? W, X. Yes, it is. Less than. So it's, it's going to become the left child of X, and it has to go in an existing red box. It doesn't get a red box of its own. New nodes have to earn it. So W becomes the left child of X, which is the right child of C. Now, you know what? I've got room to do what has to be done here. I just now inserted W, and I'll go ahead and cross it off so I don't try to insert it again, even though if I did, it would just return false. But look at what we got here. Here, we had an unbalanced tree, and it was clear Y is gonna be the one to move in with the parent. Uh, well, no, not move in with parent. It was the one that became the root of the balanced uh, miniature red tree inside the red box. All this terminology and stuff. This one also is unbalanced, but it's crooked. It's not balanced the same way. So look, look at this. When we balance this, we've got C, which is the least, because all the other parts of its mini BST are to the right of it. So C is the smallest node inside this red box. X is the largest one because it's greater than C, but then W is less than X. So W, believe it or not, W is the one that is between C and X. If I have to go to the right and then to the left to get to a node, then it's between those two nodes that we just left. So if you can visually think of it as we swing this around, if you can see me twisting my fingers down here, we're gonna swing this around. W will become the new root of this mini BST inside this red box. It will have C as its left child and X as its right child. Can I remember all that? I don't know, but I'm gonna call this a zoom in because I don't wanna have to draw the whole tree down here Zoom in, I don't know, why do I feel a cold shudder when I use the word zoom? Let's see. We'll zoom in and I'm only gonna look at this. So Y is up here in the red box with B there. See, I'm not drawing the whole tree. There's Y and Y is gonna have a black arrow to the root of whatever the mini BST is here. But the new root of this mini BST, when I do the little swing between operation is gonna be W. So we'll have W here. It will have left child, let me get the red, so don't smear it. Look at me taking care of things in it. Whoops, that's not a big enough red box. That's why it's zoomed in. So I have room for all this. Bigger red box, like so. Uh, w swings up, becomes the root of the mini BST with C on the left and dub, no, X on the right. Is that still right? W, X, yes, W comes before X there it's a pain and suffering to get there but what that is that's just a redrawing a part of the tree z is still over there a is still over here but this had to be balanced because when we insert a w it unbalanced that mini bst down at the bottom so this is as a result of a balance operation so if you can put these pieces together in your mind Think of it as we still got B and Y up here, we still got A, we still got Z, and now we've got that balanced mini BST down there in the middle. Okay? How much of this can I do without having to erase the entire board?
We shall see. I'm going to do the wraparound on this little panel here and see if I can keep going. So the next picture I draw will be whatever follows this rebalancing operation that happened after we inserted W. So it's being done as we're coming out of a recursion, as we're coming back up the tree. Who was that for the benefit of W? Okay, so you'll have to visualize this red box right here as we try to insert V. I'm not sure if I can pull that off, but we'll see. V, is this box full? Nope. So we're okay to compare here. V is greater than B. You V, W, X, Y, Z. It's less than Y. And instead of following the arrow to this, we would follow this arrow and bonk on the head. When we bonk on the head, the W is going to move in with Y. So that's going to involve a split operation. So when W moves in with parent Y, look what happens at the top here. This is going to get squashed. B is up here. B has left child Y with a tiny little red arrow because that's all we have room for. And the child that moved in with Y was W, which was on the left. So we go to the right to get to Y and come back to the left to get to W. And their happy little tiny home is getting kind of crowded up there, is it not? So this is the red box at the top of the whole tree with the root B. That happened because of the split of this. W had to rise up and join this node, and that's exactly what I redrew here. I redrew this red box at the top of the tree after W moves in because we got a split. And now there'll be four boxes across the bottom rather than three. I'm just going to do four boxes and then worry about how to fill them in. One, two, three, four. A sitting pretty over here, still with a red box all of its own, and it's still the left child of the root B. What else we got? Um, w moved up. W's kids now have red boxes of their own, C and X. I don't have to worry about smearing because there are black arrows now. Instead of the red arrows, when they were all together inside the red box, now there are black arrows connecting W to its kids C and Z. No, its kids C and X. I misspoke. And Y still has Z as a distant child way over there. Lives on the West Coast. And that's a black arrow. Let me see if I've drawn this correctly. Um... Every incoming arrow to a red box is to the root of a mini BST of that box needs to be black. Black arrows connect the red boxes to each other. Red arrows connect the nodes inside a mini BST inside a red box to each other. I'm stalling, can you tell? Why am I stalling? Because this, this aggression shall not stand. Let me say where I'm going before I go there. This is one of the weirdo crooked rotations we're going to have to do on the way out as we're coming out of what did we do oh no 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 i'm sorry i misspoke we split because we were trying to insert v and v needs to go down here so we split and w moved in we're not moving out of the tree yet because we're not finished with the insert operation we're not finished with put i told you these things are complicated v is greater than b u v is less than y u v w is less than w v is greater than c there so V gets a new node with a red end coming arrow because it's in the same red box with its parent. And I'll cross you off. Only two to go. Maybe we'll make it. Let's see here. Now then, I just now inserted V and I'm coming out. I'm returning, returning, returning. Returning true, by the way, because I just now inserted V. But as I'm coming out of the recursion, I realize, uh-oh, I've got an unbalanced tree and a red box at the top. So that's going to have to rebalance. The rebalancing part, if we ignore everything below it, is not such a big deal. B-A-L. Short for balance. Balancing is, uh, is actually just like that one. W is getting around, isn't it? It's going to swing between B and Y. So W gets to be to the root of the whole tree in a way. It's the root of the mini BST at the top red box. I better put it over here. And it's two internal kids now. When it swings up here, B is going to hang off to the left and get the red box stuff done first. No. Some of you are much better artists than I am. 
I can hear you laughing through the internet. Okay, so W gets to be the root of the red box at the top. Its left child is B. Its right child is Y. See the little swing operation? Now, without even looking, since I know there are a full complement of kids down here at the bottom, I know when I split up the kids that B is going to get two of them and Y is going to get two of them. The cool thing is, I can almost do that mechanically without thinking because these two kids are going to go with B. These two kids are going to go with Y. Split right down the middle here. I'll even put a dotted line. How can that happen? They're all in their own red boxes down here. I'll do the red boxes first. One, two, three, four. And again, without even looking, I know it's going to be black arrows that connect B to its two kids and two red boxes. Y is going to connect to its two kids with uh, black arrows. Now all I've got to do is figure out who goes where. A goes over here. Uh, C with V goes here. Red arrow. That was almost a smear. I narrowly avoided it. I, I, I just don't think I'm going to do it. It's going to smear before it's over with. And X is now the left child of Y. Look at that. It went from being the right child of W to the left child of Y. And on the far right is Z. Now, quick parity check of my picture. How can I check and see whether or not um, I've kept these things in the right order? Let's, uh, let's put our blinders on, perhaps red filtered glasses, and ignore the red boxes. If we ignore the red boxes, this should still be a valid binary search tree, believe it or not. We still got left and right kids. We don't have any third or fourth kid or anything like that. If I do an in-order traversal, these letters should print out in proper alphabetical order. Let me see if I can pull that off. Uh, in-order traversal would print out A, B, C, V, W, X, Y, Z. Ta-da! Put the blinders on, forget the red boxes. What we have is an almost, almost completely balanced binary search tree. It's keeping itself balanced by doing all the splits and the balances and all that stuff. Kind of a painful process, but it's worth it if we've got a huge database and we don't want it to degenerate into order in searches. I'm sorry if I yelled in your ear just then. You know what? That is such a thing of beauty that I'm gonna, and I'm gonna need such board space that I'm going to get rid of everything except the most recent one. And I don't know, I don't know yet if I can get away without having to erase the entire board. Did I just knock that out of the picture? No. I can't even blame, blame Solomon on that. Solomon, I made him get up and move before I even started the video. Bless his heart. I think his feelings are still hurt. There! That's what we start with as we're going into the last two. Why did I need all this board space? Guess why? When I look at the root of the whole tree, that's not a two-way arrow, that's a one-way arrow. Nice stall, wasn't it? When I look at the, the red box up here, this is full of the tick. It's going to have to pop, split, and send W up to a red box all its own. And that's what I'll start with. You know what? I don't think I can do that in the narrow band down here, so I'm going to start partitioning off big chunks of the board. W alone at the top in a red box which I can make kind of small because it doesn't have any kids in there with it now. Uh, B and Y become masters of their own domains. B and Y will now have red boxes of their own. This is just as, uh, as a result of the split operation that we have to do with the red box at the top. And these are black arrows. I don't want to jinx myself, but I don't think I've drawn anything except a, one side of a box so far of the wrong color. This is a new world record for me. Uh, what do we got? Stop bragging and keep drawing. A over here to the left. Oh, I almost did it. I almost did the black arrow first. That would have made me smear my red box. Black arrow from B to A. And C here. C here. And... What a horrible C. C with right child V inside a red box. I'll do the arrow. 
in the red box. And V. Black arrow from B to C. What else we got? Y has two kids, X and Z, that have red boxes of their own. Now, even more so, I invite you to look at this tree that's redrawn after we split the red box at the top. Look how balanced this is as a binary search tree. Not only is this exactly the same data set that led to that ridiculously scrawny, wiggly back and forth snake of a binary search tree that was pure order in for searching. Look at this so far. We're not done, but look at this so far. How balanced could we possibly be? Uh, well, maybe a little more. This is a little bit off. But you up here, let's do you. We did you. Um, that's what led to the split operation. We had to split because we were headed down the tree and we ran into a full box. So now, now we can be deliberate about it. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, U, V, W. U is less than W. So it comes over here to B. This is not full. It can't be. We just now split. Okay, uh, U is greater than B. We come this direction. Is this box full? No, uh, it almost is. Then let's see, U and V, it's less. Another crooked tree, but that's okay. We can deal with crookedness. Inside the same red box, <sighs> and I, again, it's not laziness, it's, it's trying to um, facilitate movement of time here. We just now inserted you, but this has to rebalance. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that down below here. I hope you can see this down here. When this rebalances, low swing operation, if this had been crooked the other way, and now I wish that we had seen one of those in the examples, um, if this had been crooked the other way, we would still swing that bottom note up to between whoever was above it inside the red box. So when I swing this one up to be between the two nodes that are up here, it's going to be U at the root between C and V. So it'll be U at the root, C on the left, V on the right, and U will now have the incoming black arrow, which I'll do with dots. This box is gone. It's being replaced with this because I'm balancing. I hope this doesn't confuse things too much. But this is as a result of a balance operation that was required when I inserted U and it gave me, here's, here's one way to think of it. Whenever you got two red arrows in a row, you're gonna have to rebalance. So it could be going to the right back to the left. It could be going to the left back to the right. It could be going right, right. It could be going left, left. Any of those four possibilities, I'm gonna have to rebalance it so that I no longer have two red arrows in a row. It's okay to have two red arrows inside the red box, but it has to be balanced. Otherwise we are wasting our time. And what? I am, I've inserted you already. I think I know what's going to happen with D. Maybe I should take a break and make a cup of coffee or something. You know what? We've gotten this far. Let's just trudge through it. We're almost done. We're almost there. Here comes D. You know what's going to happen. D is less than W. D is greater than B. And it, it hits this box. This one's gone. That's a a figment of your imagination at this point. Uh, D, when I come this direction, it hits this box and this box has to split. Let me do the easy part first. W at the top and nothing changes on the right. So it's gonna be W and a red box at the top all by itself. I think it's gonna be all by itself. Unless something decides to move in later on. Y is way over here. And X and z down here all of them have their very own places they don't have to live with anybody nobody has red arrows since they all have their own red boxes nothing but black arrows connects all around there that's the easy half of the tree this one let's see here's what's going to happen we looked at peeked ahead and saw that this box was full so this has to split before we go any further so instead of just having these two boxes right here beneath node B, we're going to need three red boxes. One, two, three. 
Why? Because there were two red boxes, but this one's got a split. And when it splits, a one red box becomes two. When it splits, U is going to move in with B. When it moves in with B, the box above, the parent red box, it's going to get a shrunken red arrow from the right for B rather than a long black arrow. Here's U. Here's the red box. B is the left child of W, like so. Uh, A. A is been pretty consistent through this whole thing over here. Red box of his own, a black incoming arrow. Now, when we split, um, C and V are going to get their own red boxes. C, V, and black arrows coming in. So what this should be, if I've done it correctly, that should be what the tree looks like. As we're moving down the tree, we realize this red box is full. It has to split into two. So C and V each get their very own red box. V moves in with B and it gets a shrunken arrow that turns red because it's now in the same red box with its parent. All of that was in preparation of the grand finale, D, D end. So we insert D, D was greater than B, which caused this mess in the first place. D is less than U, D is greater than C, there. <sighs> Quick parity check, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that how many we had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're all there. Is this correct? Well, look how balanced it is. It's almost a perfectly balanced tree, except for a couple of red arcs. If you want to think, well, what's the best case for this? What's the worst case? Um, all of the red boxes, just, I, I'm going to have to talk about them again, the two, three, four tree nodes. All of the red boxes at the bottom of the tree are at the same level. And by that, I don't mean it's the same number of arrows to connect the circles anymore. I mean, we've got the same number of black arrows to get to the bottom of the tree, no matter which direction we go. This one is exactly two black arrows with nothing intervening. This one, even though this is crooked, W goes to B, goes to U, goes to C, goes to D. Yeah, that's a longer path. But if we count just the black arrows, the ones connecting the red boxes, it's still just two. One, two. Now we could do some mathematical stuff, and if you'd already had discrete structures and algorithm analysis and everything, then you would nod your head knowingly and say, you know what, well we've got order log n on the searches regardless. In the best case, it's a little less than log n. In the worst case, it's a little more than log n. The worst case is we've got a little red arrow, uh, every other arrow on the way to the bottom of the tree. How bad could this be? It could have been there was a node right here with the red arrow, so it could have gone red, black, red, black, red, and that's it. Every other arrow could have been red, and it turns out that order log n is still order log n, even if it's order two times log n. That's just the rules of algorithm analysis, because algorithm analysis is looking at how bad does this get as the data set gets huge. And as the data set gets huge, we don't even care about the difference between plain old log n and two times log n. All of that was an argument to say, job well done for us. We now have a balanced binary search tree. If I hope it's still a binary search tree, I can check by doing the handy dandy in order traversal. A, B, C, D, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Yes. Again, ignoring the red boxes. It's a valid binary search tree that's pretty darn near balanced. Now, don't ignore the red boxes. Look at the red boxes. It's a 2-3-4 tree with balanced mini BSTs in place of uh, three element arrays. So done and done. We've, we've improved on not only the BST, we've also improved at this point on the 2-3-4 tree. And this might be a good stopping place. That's not an external node, that's a checkbox. Done. See you online.